Hey guys, so this is Ilgan from Asi Istanbul again. So today I will be talking about our uh, IR targets, strategy, channels and timeline. And hope you will like it. Um, before starting, I want to mention that I do believe the word um, having too many partnerships is having no partnerships and um, having limited amount of partnerships is going to make the quality of the partnership way more better. I do agree with that, but considering the amount of people that I have to approve and um, re get realized, uh, I cannot do it with three or four partnerships. So I had to categorize what I uh, expect from a partnerships and I targeted my main partners according to those three points that I um, would like to receive from my partners. So um, to start with uh, the demand of the uh, EPs in general in Istanbul, in my location, um, the general demand is for Europe. It is kind of like a trend. It, the flight tickets are way more cheaper, so uh, and that's why it's really easy to sell. And I know there are a lot of projects in Europe, but I also know that most of the projects are really, how can I say, strict with the ratio of the ratio of EPs that are coming from one country. So. Knowing that I can send more than needed EPs to this region, I am making as much as partnerships, as um, getting as much as contacts from Europe um, as I can, because um, most of the projects are not having too much EPs. And to be able to send um, a certain amount of EPs, I have to um, have access to a lot of projects, more than enough projects in Europe. That's why um, for the demand, my target was Europe and my understanding was to be able to have um, as much as partnerships as I can. For fast and um, big numbers of approves, I was targeting the top exchanges from the last um, year. I really uh, looked through my current timeline, um, where did she approve the most, and uh, how fast could she uh, able to um, approve those people with those um, partners. So I really looked through that and I chose some top exchanges from this, how can I say, pool, and I really targeted them for um, having the big amount of numbers. And for the CX part, I really targeted that, um, again, I looked through my current um, summer peak and winter peak, and the uh, CX part of, I really talked with her, uh, the best, best experience, the best cases, which with which um, regions and entities, NLCs she had the best CX with um, and they were more aligned, let's say. So I really targeted those old and um, old partners that we know that Delaware is good CX. So it's more like uh, trust relationships, let's say. For the, for the channels that we had with the partners, uh, the most general one, of course, the Skype meetings uh, while I was an elect, while I was doing follow-ups with my partners. We use Skype meetings, and this is the most common channel, I believe, in uh, Isaac, let's say. And then, as I mentioned, we did have follow-ups on the CX part, on the um, completed survey um, results, and we also used Skype and WhatsApp um, really actively on those follow-up meetings, let's say, and um, the thing we are really certainly, how can I say, providing to our partners, promising to our partners is um, their projects will be promoted to our EPs in the fastest, in the most um, active way, let's say. And other than that, we have partnership tools uh, while, where we, we have a national one with all the biggest partners that we made the most exchange with, let's say. In this partner tool, we have um, from the name of the EP and the, when uh, did the EP get approved, when did the EP get realized, and there is a place for every 16 um, standards that we had to provide, co-provide with 
our partners. And in this tool, we are checking which one, um, which of these standards are provided and which of them are not. So based on this tool, we are giving feedbacks and having feedbacks from our um, partners. So it's a really um, useful uh, tool for MC and for us to be able to track um, with the how can I say certain LCs and entities? Um, where is the main problem um, that causes us not to be able to have more complete? So it's really um, good for us to track and evaluate. And for the last um, part, we have a, a sheet. How can I say? We have a tool. Uh, in OGV department that we are tracking the uh, how many times uh, members are calling EPs, um, what's the update on the EPs, um, did they get approved or did they get realized? We are tracking um, in this big uh, master tool, let's say, and in this big master tool, we have this um, opportunities sheet, let's say, and in this opportunities sheet, we have the projects of only our partners, our biggest partners. So when we um, convince, how, how can I, let's say, when we convince our EP to a certain country or a certain SDG or a project, um, the first thing we are we are sending um, to EPs, uh, the first thing we are offering to EPs are, the, of course, the projects of our partners. And as I mentioned in the previous um, episode. Um, as I said, we are first calling the EPs, we are um, telling them about the concept of GV, telling them about um, SDGs, the projects, what can they do, what which countries they can go, and the process time we are informing them about all of these things. And to follow up this call, we are um, immediately sending them a mail with the, all of the things that um, we mentioned in the phone call. And we are also uh, putting some, uh, how can I say, example opportunities links according to their, um, how can I say, preferences. And those project links are always uh, from our biggest partners' projects. So um, these projects are most likely to get application from our EPs. So that's a big, so that's a big advantage we are providing to our partners, let's say. So for the timeline, it's an extremely important topic in my opinion, because if you miss the starting of the um, approval peak, if you miss the attraction phase, you won't be able to approve as much. If you miss the approval phase, you won't be able to realize as much. Everything is connected. Everything is really dependent on each other. So if you miss the starting of it, you um, possibly not be won't be able to um, provide that much exchanges, let's say. Um, so missing the starting of the peak and and not be able to set the timeline right with your biggest partners is going to be a big problem for your delivery part and the um, exchange part. So it's really important. It, it's it's like really it's really something to be careful with. So as a VP OGV, I. How can I say, the five days after my election, I was in a Skype meeting with my first partner. So VP and VP IGV and VP OGV should be really fast and agile about this. And for the summer peak, um, first of all, the beginning of the approval peak um, gets earlier and earlier every single, um, every single year. So for example, my current um, started the actual peak, actual approval peak in the beginning of the March, but my approval peak started exactly one month before, which is the beginning of the February. So I am, um, with not being sure, of course, but I am thinking that the next year's approval peak will be starting even earlier. So uh, I really suggest every VPOGV and VPIGV to get their plannings and get the get their timeline set with the partners as easy as um, early as possible so for my summer peak I think um, all the meetings and the sharings and the expectation settings should be done uh, by the middle of the February at least this is the time I um, finished and finalized with uh, all my biggest partners so it was really beneficial for me of course and for the winter peak and Let's say those Skype meetings with the partners and 
and having new partners has a different, um, how can I say, um, importance in the winter peak because um, your winter peak, uh, how can I say, meetings will take you way much, way longer because you have an entire summer peak to evaluate with your partners. Um, you have a lot of feedbacks to give. You have the, to discuss the um, timeline of the projects way more carefully because. Unlike the summer peak, in the winter peak, uh, at least for my country, most of the universities are still running and we have to be able to fit those realizations in the semester um, break of the EP. So it was really important. It was, um, we had so much more to discuss with the partners. So for the winter peak, um, how can I say, um, timeline starting, like for the for the evaluation, uh, project sharing, and timeline aligning part, uh, I think it should be done by middle of the August. So you can you can start fresh and strong in the beginning of the September. So I really believe, I also believe that in the beginning of the August, um, attraction phase should be started because in the winter peak, the whole schools are open. Uh, people are not, will not be able to pay as much as attention. So um, I really think that August is really an important month for all of these preparations to be done. And for the importance of being partners with the certain entities and the LCs, it makes a drastic change on your one, um, value deliver parts, uh, CX part, and two, your exchange numbers. Before anything, you will have way faster and way more efficient communication. You will be able to um, inform each other really fast. That's why you will manage EP's experience really fast and really efficiently. For example, if uh, something wrong uh, happens in the EP's experience, you will be able to fix it and reflect on it really fast. And for the approval process, for the matching part, um, Contacting with the incoming parts is really, really crucial in my opinion. Because um, as I said in LC Istanbul's um, approval uh, motto is speed is everything and I should be able to um, contact with the incoming department really fast in order to um, deliver this approval process really fast. So it's really important for me. Other than that, um, since you are in a really good communication, you will be able to set your timeline, align your timeline together, so it won't be a problem for if you to have certain OPS, certain IPS in um, right time. And I also want to show you the importance uh, of being partners with uh, certain LCs from certain entities. And I really want to show you the um, effect that it did on my approval numbers, total exchange numbers. So on the right, you can see um, the number of exchanges I made with certain entities. Um, I obviously have really strong partnerships with LCs from those entities, and you can see more than half of my um, exchange numbers till the 31st of August approval numbers, these are approval numbers, uh, are done by these uh, five entities, these partner entities. So let's say if uh, I, were, I wasn't um, partners with those LCs, I will make half the amount of uh, approvals that I have now, which means uh, the quarter, one quarter of my total approval, no approval numbers would be gone which means more than 100 exchanges uh, wouldn't be done if I, were, if I wasn't uh, partners with those entities. And it's a huge number, in my opinion. Uh, and in my opinion, it shows how important it is to be partners with certain entities that you are targeting. Uh, it, it would make a drastic change on my total approval number, so it's extremely important. Now I would like to talk uh, a bit more about our one of our biggest and most important partners uh, in Egypt. It's German University of Cairo uh, from Egypt. Uh, so uh, GFC is one of the how can I say, oldest partners of our LC. Uh, it's kind of a tradition for uh, OGVVP's currents and IGVVP's currents to meet their LX with each other. So uh, we L two LCs knew each other for a long time. Uh, that's why um, 
we are really big partners and we really trust each other in the terms of um, CX because uh, from what I heard from my current, um, the CX part of the GUC was really good so that really um, drove me to have a big partnership with, um, the, um, with these LC's uh, IGV site. Uh, so they also had a really big amount of projects. They had a lot to offer to us, and we have we have a lot to offer them as well in terms of um, the promotion of their projects in Turkey, the promotion of the country in Turkey. Uh, it's really important for us that we give enough space and importance to their promotions, uh, since they are a really big partner for us, obviously. Um, for the channels uh, we had with um, JUC, obviously Skype meetings with VPIGV, uh, Osama Tayel, and uh, we have this WhatsApp group. It's really simple, just a two channels, but we are using those channels really effectively, maybe every day. So that really ma makes our approval and the CX process really easier and faster. So all the things I um, mentioned that I am expecting from a partner, we are, uh, we were able to receive those from GUC in the summer peak and winter peak as well. So we had a really um, strong and fast communication, especially in the approval part, which is, uh, as the OGB Department of LC Istanbul, one of the most important thing. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. I cannot say this enough. Uh, so we were able to have this strong, fast, agile communication with GUC, and our timelines were really aligned, especially for the summer peak. Um, they were really open-minded and really helpful with uh, fitting the realization starting and the ending uh, with our um, EPs. Their projects are, uh, as far as I know, most of their projects are running the whole year, so it wasn't a problem for us to fit the right realization times. Uh, and it wasn't a problem for us to, you know, um, in case something goes wrong with the EP's visa and other things, something goes wrong with the starting of the realization, they were really helpful and really um, flexible with the project's timeline. Uh, other than that, their TLs and RTLs had a really um, strong communication as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, TLs should be really um, active on the IR parts, in my opinion, and their TLs were also active, so um, they were really able to work together really easily, let's say. They are extremely agile, uh, really open-minded and easy to work with. And I want to give an example for this agile part. So two of our EPs, not exactly, one of our, one of my EPs, one of LC Kojeli from Turkey's EPs were uh, in another LC uh, doing a backpacking project and they had some, let's say, safety issues there. They were really um, frightened and without telling uh, both of the VPO GVs, they um, t took a bus to Cairo directly and informed us when they were, uh, let's say, one hour um, to do, when they had one hour left to the Cairo, and we were really panicked. Both VPOGVs, we were really um, didn't we didn't know what to do. So uh, I called uh, VPIGV Osama Tayel, and he was really helpful with us. He was really um, calm. Uh, he said, we can pick them up, it's okay, um, we can give them a place. Uh, it was extremely um, a life uh, saving experience, let's say it was really helpful. They And after, I don't know, two or three days, we were able to re approve them uh, to the GUC's projects. It was really great. I, re I'm, I really, I still to this day appreciate the fact that they were able to pick them up without any question. Uh, they were really fast, they really. Um, provided a really good experience to our EPs. So uh, I'm really thankful uh, for this um, event, let's say, uh, to the date. And uh, other than that, I really want to add, um, they're really professional with the CX parts, in my opinion, because uh, for the whole summer peak, uh, we um, approved together a number of EPs and we had, we closed summer peak with a total of zero cases. And uh, I think it's a really big um, accomplishment. And talking about the numbers, you can see below uh, our applications are accepted and approved numbers. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we had um, approximately 60 approved with the uh, whole entity of Egypt, and um, one third of them uh, was made by was made by um, GUC. 
So it's easy for me to say that a big ratio uh, of total approvals with the entity uh, is uh, made with GUC. And the reason for that is, again, we are we have a really big trust environment for them uh, that they will be able to deliver a really good value delivery and CX part. And um, other than that, what can be improved next year? Obviously, our LX will be working together as well. Uh, it's a really big partnership that cannot uh, be fit in the one year, in my opinion. What is to be um, improved is, as you can see, our accepted numbers a little bit um, dropped uh, considering next, considering the last year, and our approved numbers can be a little bit higher and our accepted to approved ratio can be a little bit higher as well, considering the really um, fast communication we had. And uh, we definitely will be giving um, feedbacks to our elects for the next year as well.